so the community knows this is a great need. Like I said, there's 26,000 youth that age out. Um, you know, we can't do this alone. Tonight in our big story breakdown, we are digging into Oklahoma's foster care system and the needs that we're seeing all across the state. Let's start with where things stand right now. You got to take a look at this information from Oklahoma Human Services. You can see there are nearly 450 children waiting for a foster home. 6,300 kids are currently in the custody of the state and the agency still needs more than 800 families. Now the need for foster families been an ongoing issue. Last October, we told you someone posted in a foster care group asking folks to take in more than 20 children so they wouldn't have to sleep in offices. OK, DHS told us that wasn't a reality, but a woman who fostered 26 kids throughout her life told us it happens on occasion. There are kids who sleep in offices. That's nothing that is surprising or brand new to me. At the time, DHS told us they were looking for more foster families, specifically those willing to help a child with behavioral health needs. Over 600,000 kids are served by the U.S. foster care system each year, and a new report by USA Facts shows from 2012 to 2021, the number of kids in foster care has only decreased by 1.5%. This is based off the most recent data from the Department of Health and Human Services. West Virginia, Alaska, and Montana were leading the country with over 1,000 kids per 100,000 residents in foster care, while New Jersey and Delaware had under 200. And according to this data, Oklahoma ranked 14th in the country with 705. Now to become a foster parent in Oklahoma, you do have to meet a few requirements. First, you need to be at least 21 years old. You need to be a responsible and healthy adult capable of meeting the needs of children in DHS custody. Oklahoma Human Services also looks for stable living arrangements and relationships, whether you're single, married, or divorced. And you also have to complete and pass all required background checks. And finally, have a sufficient income to meet the child's needs. Another issue that thousands of children in Oklahoma foster care face is aging out of the system and finding themselves without a home. But a small community is looking to change that by welcoming women who need a safe place to stay. Fox 25's Peyton May took a trip down to Stratford to meet a family working to save every life they can. It's a community building up strong women, giving them a place to work and a home. There's nothing worth more. 99 plus one is a home of healing and love. We just love them and accept them and pray for them. Gail Priest is the co-founder of the shelter and her mission has always been taking care of those who need it most. My husband and I have, we've legally adopted 13 children. So we've been working through the foster care system at all levels. This is much more than a shelter. It's a program for women aging out of the foster system or need a safe place to go. One of those women is Joy. Now they call me Maza Joy because I want to be joyful. <laughs> Joy is part of the family here who has overcome difficult circumstances. Well, I was in Ethiopia. I was in an accident and I got stuck there and I was sick. This place and these people turned her life around. I couldn't learn anything because I was in fight flight uh, mode, so they just hopped to help me to be safe here. The five young ladies living down this hall are educated together, employed at the on-site coffee shop, and have multiple outlets to work through prior wounds. And we have a, um, a girl on site that does neurofeedback with the kids, um, which has been huge. It can really help with the trauma. Um, music therapy has been really helpful as well. We don't want it to be an institution. We don't want it to be just everybody independent. We want to create a family setting for these girls. This family is not only healing the past. If you're having a hard time, they're there for you, they pray for you, and they just don't give up on you. But shaping the future too. When I go back to Ethiopia, if I'm opening up a girl's home stuff, I want to open up a coffee shop too. Your presence, oh. Stratford, Peyton May, Fox 25 News. We've got a real opportunity now to get into some of those numbers and tell you what they mean for you and how we can make some change here. Joining us is Joe Dorman with the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. And Joe, 
education is really one of the big things making headlines all across the state right now. And, you know, it's a really tough score when it comes to the Every Kid Counts report here. What kind of things can be done with foster care and some families there to help sort of improve those outcomes when it comes to education? You mentioned the Kids Count report that we ranked 46th in the nation, 49th when it comes to education. There are so many different things that can be done, but a lot of it starts with the family or those family members around. One of the numbers you didn't mention is we're ninth in the nation by the last number we just saw grandparents raising grandkids. So it's even worse of an epidemic. We've got to try and find those individuals that can take these kids into the home and then make sure that they have that stability. Uh, making sure they have a meal and be able to go to school and learn that's going to be the best way we can prepare them for the future. Yeah, we know those families and those people are here. So what kind of things are being done to help connect those places that we know those kids will thrive with the kids who need them the most? The school is turning into a great resource. Uh, DHS has partnered up with the schools to put DHS based workers in the schools to help those families up front. They're trying to keep the kids out of foster care by making sure that the kids have the resources they need, help the families get the essentials for applying for services. And those are ways that we're seeing some positive things happen in Oklahoma. And we certainly need to see those positives with the numbers we face. Yeah, and when you talk about that, especially being 46th in the nation in that report, but it's not a situation that's all gloom and doom for everybody. There are positive things that we can hang our hats on and really focus on that are going on in Oklahoma. There absolutely are. Uh, we've seen an increase in the numbers for response with medical issues. Uh, with the Medicaid expansion question that passed a couple of years ago, we're seeing more kids get on to Sooner Care. Uh, we're working right now, OICA is working with Legal Aid Services to raise awareness to try and get families to sign up for Sooner Care to see if they will qualify. There's a hotline that's been set up to try and help those families apply for services. And you've got a big push coming up. There is an event that's coming up in November, a forum where folks can really get involved and get involved and be part of some of the work that you have going on here right on the ground floor. Tell us a little bit about that and how folks can really help make this push happen. It's, it's an easy number for me to remember. It's our 23rd fall forum that was started by OICA back uh, then. And we continue to work to try and raise awareness on issues. We invite advocates to come from all over the state to share ideas and help us brainstorm. And from that, we put together a legislative agenda and work with lawmakers. In fact, uh, we usually have about a dozen lawmakers come to the conference to interact with advocates. Now, what are some of those policies as we look ahead here now? What are some of those things you're really gonna be focused on? Uh, looking at foster care issues, yeah. that'll be one. Uh, kids aging out. Uh, Speaker McCall and President Pro Tem Treat had a great bill that went through last year that unfortunately was vetoed and I think they're going to bring it back up to try and increase services for those kids aging out to give them a fairish chance to try and succeed at life. We've just got to provide those services and help those kids that are truly at risk and try and set them on the right path to have a successful adulthood. Well Joe we appreciate your time and your passion man. Thanks for coming in and Always talking with us tonight and helping us break this down. Well, this school year, there's a new opportunity to help young mothers hoping to get their diploma. Fox 25's David Chazanoff made the trip to Wawoka, where students are learning alongside their own kids. Making sure there's no obstacles to an education. For the first time in Wawoka Public Schools history, young mothers are getting a chance to graduate. We know that this, there's a need. We've wanted to do this for a long time. 14 mothers are now taking part in what's called an alternative education program. Not that we're encouraging teen pregnancy, but I think that we need to encourage diplomacy. I think we need to encourage that they finish. And I think we need to, and I think what we're doing here is saying, we're here for the whole family. Class goes from 9 a.m. to 1.15 p.m. Monday through Friday and everyone gets breakfast and lunch. This is their little home. You know, we've, uh, we've uh, got a microwave coming, we've got a uh, mini fridge coming, and they'll be able to have their formula, they'll be able to warm formula. Uh, a couple of the girls will be nursing. Baby toys are in the classroom to keep the kids entertained while mom is learning. The other young ladies that are in here, they're becoming a family, and so everybody wants to help. And so if a baby's upset or needs to be held, if Miss Ann can't help, one of the other young ladies jumps in to help. Next week, the program will have three more students. So now that it's become available, more are coming and saying, we need this program. As word spreads about this opportunity, the district says it needs more supplies. Some of, the, some of these children are from very high poverty and they don't have the, the materials they need. 
And while the search for more classroom materials continues, Ann Stewart has a message for teen moms watching. I would encourage any girl that uh, feels like that, oh, I can't make it, or I've got a baby and this can't happen. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can make it, and there are people out there that care for you, and if you can't get anyone else to care, call us. Reporting in Wewoka, David Chazanoff, Fox 25 News. And that was your big story breakdown. You can learn more about that program or the foster care system on OKCFox.com.